Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys. It was fantastic to hear you sing and praise and clap this morning. It's always a treat to get to do that with you here at Summit. And uh, before I keep on going about today, I got to talk about something last week because I'm actually still kind of a little bit on the high from it from last week. Pastor Nate shared last week that uh, one of our core values is seeing lives changed because we are a church of people whose lives have been changed by Jesus. And I thought we saw that in a pretty special way last weekend. 25 people last weekend were baptized into God's family. I think that was amazing. Uh, Pastor Nate shared that, uh, that the scriptures say, repent and be baptized and you will receive the Holy Spirit. And that, uh, that's kind of like the definition of a changed life, right? When Jesus saves you, gives you his spirit, t- starts to transform you. And uh, this weekend's topic kind of dovetails into that. Um, it's actually something that I'm pretty invested in because we're talking about compelling worship, worship that moves us to action. And, uh, and, and I do have the title like worship arts director here, and Pastor Nate asked me, he's like, do you have anything to say about this? I said, yes, I do. (laughs) And here we are. Well, um, before, he's going to do most of the heavy lifting. I've just got this little front bit, but um, I do want to say this. We have to kind of start with this definition of what worship is, and I want to give you a really simple, easy definition for what worship is, and it's simply this. It's our response to what matters most. It's our response to what matters most. Now, there's a lot of room in that definition for that what matters most to just kind of be anything. And we're actually creatures that are made to worship. We're made to put something as the most important thing. And, um, and so it's not whether you worship or not. It's what you worship. And, um, and something tends to be the most important thing, and other things tend to get sacrificed in the name of that thing. So take, for instance, two competing values. I think we all want like, our families to have like, a good relationship, like a, a relationship with our spouse. We want our kids to like, want to come visit after they move out of the house, and, and they come back. And that, that's like, important to like, everyone, ideally. Um, and then there's also this v- value we've got of financial stability, for example. And when the two start to fight, one sometimes can win out. You might say no to a job that's gonna take you traveling a lot, or you might say yes to a job that works you 100 hours a week and your kids are like, who are you again? You know, it's like these things can fight with each other and that's kind of what happens when we talk about the most important thing when we worship. And uh, this morning I wanna go to Romans 12, one. And this is something, that this is Paul's letter to to the Romans and he says this, he says, therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so our worship is in response to something, and it's a sacrifice of something. Paul's pointing out something very foundational about how we live our lives and how, with the help of God, Christians can start to live differently. And this book of Romans, uh, that, there's that little therefore at the beginning of the verse, and then we, and then we have to think about what we just talked about. Um, and in Romans, tw- uh, Romans from 1 to chapter 11, it kind of lays out the whole story pretty succinctly. Uh, we're far from perfect, and then Jesus, while we were still sinners, came to die for us at just the right time so that our sins might be forgiven. And then he rose again so that we could have eternal life. And then he says, I'm not gonna leave you there. I'm gonna give you my spirit. I'm gonna start to transform you, your mind. Everything will be different after this. And so in summary, he's saying, listen, God did everything and we didn't do anything. And so when we see that verse in view of God's mercy, that is what Paul is talking about. He says, the most important thing, I want you to look at Jesus, all of his work. And then we live in response. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, ways that you encounter God through worship, but I just want to start off with this one. And, um, and we talked about that something gets sacrificed in the name of the most important thing, right? And so this is, this is the first one. We worship through courageous generosity. See, we are all about living completely in response to what God has done for us. We look at God's mercies. We sing about that every single day. And this is one of those examples of this is, this is a way that we live. Everything that we are about here at Summit is to worship, and this is one of them. So we, when we embrace what Jesus has done for us, we start to see how he has 
provided for us. Even when it's tempting to say, hey, I'm really good at my job. Um, but Jesus gave us the gifts to be really good at that job. He gave us the smarts to smart, right? Um, so for example, um, the stock market, interest rates, those sorts of things. And that's not a new thing for anyone. We know that interest rates tend to go up and down, mostly up right now. Um, but there's a guy in Acts chapter four, his name is Barnabas. And he's one of the guys that kind of jumped into the church pretty quickly. And it says in Acts four that all the believers were of one heart, they were of one mind, and God's mercy was so powerful among them, it says, that no one wanted for anything that they were sharing their possessions and taking care of each other, getting each other, covering each other's backs, and they were even laying their gifts down at the apostles' feet because they knew the impact that Jesus' kingdom could have on this world. It was in view of God's mercy that they sacrificed something for that sake. So, um, so, so Barnabas, he, what he does is he actually goes and gets a field of his, and he sells it. He sells the field, and then he brings it to the apostles' feet, and, um, and, and we know that that can be a scary thing, right? Like, to, to, like, this is an investment piece. This is probably making money for him. This was something he said, this, but, but I see what Jesus is doing. I see God's mercies and his love for me, and I know the impact that it can have, and so now I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna live in courageous generosity. And it really did cost him something. That's, that's a serious thing to sell off. And, um, and, and I, I hope that's an encouragement to each of you because when we do that, we see that, ki that God's kingdom gets blessed by that and more people hear about Jesus. And I want to talk about some practical ways that we can do that before we get into the rest of the message. Um, the first f we can give online, you can give through the Summit app, and there are black boxes around the campus. You can place your offering in there, and, um, and it's really an opportunity for us to worship and live generously and courageously. And, um, and all of these are practical ways to give, but this weekend I invite you to make a gift uh, that is a personal and meaningful act of worship for you. In view of God's mercy, we bring this, all of ourselves, but also this, as a sacrifice to God. This is our true act of worship. You may not have land to sell, but we can give a gift that does cost us something and God transforms us. And so as we, I invite you to do that now, just in response to everything that God's done for us, and I wanna pray, and then we'll continue with the message. So let's pray now. Jesus, we thank you that you are a God that's done everything for us, that we're purely recipients of your love and your grace and your mercy, and also that you provide for us. I pray your blessing over us as we open up these scriptures to explore what it is to worship you and respond in a life that is saying thank you to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Nick. Let's give him a hand this morning. Appreciate your leadership here with our church. And I do want to say this as we jump in here today uh, to talk about our, our value of compelling worship, worship that moves a people in response to God. Um, a worship leader once told me a number of years uh, ago, they said, as you, as you lead your staff team and, and people that are a part of the ministry in different ways, when it comes to worship, he said, you not only want somebody who is a worship leader, you also want somebody who is a lead worshiper. Um, isn't that cool? Uh, you don't just want somebody who is a worship leader, but you want somebody who is also a lead worshiper. And I just want to share with you here today, you don't get to see sometimes behind the scenes and, and the preparation during the week, but I'm telling you is, as our team prays and prepares uh, ahead of time, as the band and people pray before they come on uh, here to be able to help lead you into worship, as I see people like Ashland tonight and Nick and people like Joni and Seth and Allison and others who worship lead here in our church, we have an incredible group of people who truly are lead worshipers, whose heart is for God. And let's just honor them and thank them for, for their heart for Jesus as they lead us here. Along with everybody else who is a part of uh, being in our band, our team, and, and playing here as well. Uh, as we jump in here today, I wanna share a story with you uh, about 
um, something that I heard on a Saturday night. It was just a couple of weeks ago. So Saturday night, we had worship. We are grabbing some food there in the lobby. I ended up at a table. The weather was still gorgeous, so we were sitting outside, and I was talking with someone, and, uh, and she said to me, she said, Pastor Nate, I just want to share with you a story about, about somebody that I know that is now going to summit and how God impacted them in their life. She said that her commute regularly takes her by our campus. So commutes in towards the city, going to work, back and forth, those kinds of things, and, and just comes by on I-10. And she said that her friend was going through some difficult things in her life. And, and one day as she was driving by the campus, she had noticed the, the church and the cross there before, but one day she was driving by and there was a little bit of rain, a little bit of some clouds in the sky and the sun breaking through. And she said that as she drove by, there was a beautiful rainbow that set itself right over the summit campus. And uh, she said it was just like right over the top of the cross. She said it was so compelling to her that, that even though it was off of her route and her commute back home, she actually got off of the freeway at the end of the day, pulled off the freeway, drove into our parking lot, and just sat there and had a moment with God. And... And she said that that friend now has been regularly coming to Summit, and that was the first step that drew her close, seeing that cross, and, and God is doing some great things in her life. And, and I said to, to her, I said, you know what, there's, there's actually a number of people that we've heard a, a similar story like that from them as well. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at this picture here, you'll see uh, a picture that somebody took, I think from our worship team, probably Jeff, uh, about a year ago. Um, there have been others that have driven by at the, the end of the day, just captured the picture of the cross, lighted at night. They have seen that, and all of a sudden, because of something that is going on in their life, God captures their attention, and they have even driven in to our parking lot to be able to just take a moment and became a first step for them to, to enter into this place. And you can see there on the building not only the cross that is lighted, um, we designed the campus with that to be public and bold, facing towards the freeway. Uh, in fact, for some of you who were here with us, um, when that cross went up uh, on that day, it happened that, that many people came out and actually wrote Bible verses and prayers for people and for our community as the cross went up and before it was painted over. And you can see there on the building uh, the, the, the welcome word there that we pray that as Jesus is lifted up, that people would be welcomed and drawn close to him. Amen? And I believe that, that God works through buildings and facilities, but God especially, as we jump into this series called We Are the Church, God especially works through the lives of people just like you as, as he is lifted up. And, and what I want to talk with you here about today is some of what the Bible shares with us about the, the power and the compelling nature of worship, so much so that we have elevated this to one of our core values here at Summit. It's been a part of the heartbeat of our church for a very, very long time. And, and this, this idea there that that worship, that God does something in that, and it is active in something that moves us to, to change lives and to action as we respond to what God has done. And and so I want to, to share four ways with you here today that, that I pray God encourages you in, in ways that you can encounter God in worship as well. Four different ways, four different postures, kind of even directions, movements that take place in worship that, that help us to experience Him. The first is this, that your worship is offered to God. Your worship is offered to the Lord. So, as Nick shared, uh, as we share an offering, as we give, and that could be done uh, electronically ahead of time, that could be done in person here in this place, but the offering, the idea of giving something to God to honor Him, to say, you are most important in my life, is is something that is fundamental to worship that goes back to the very roots of Christian worship, even to the Old Testament among God's people, that, that the essential element of worship was bringing an offering to, to God. 
And the reality is this, that worship is meant to be active. It is not meant to simply be a passive experience where you come in and say, that's kind of cool. Um, you may be, if you're fairly new to faith and exploring some of this, kind of checking things out, and that's okay. But, but ultimately, worship will come alive for you. You will see God working in your life when it becomes an active experience rather than a passive one. And that's why Psalm 100 verse 2 reminds us here as well, uh, is that we have the ability to, to, to bring our offerings to God. And in many ways, we do that financially. We also can bring an offering of praise, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. And I want you to know, it is so moving for me, these moments along the way, when I just, when I hear our church singing and what God's doing in the room, as I, was, as I was taking communion here this morning, just to hear the swell of your voices and to hear what God is, is doing as people are singing and responding to him is, is absolutely beautiful. Now, one of the, the unique pieces that I would encourage you in uh, as you worship God is to think through in your own mind, what are some ways that this can become where you can personally connect and engage where this becomes a part of your act of worship? So even as you, as you walk into church, as you come into this place, there may be a, a prayer that you just take a moment to be able to pray and say, God, I want to I know you will be here and you were working this morning. God, I want to, to hear from you today. Or maybe a moment where you are singing a song and I would encourage you to think about the lyrics and what that means to make that personally engaging for you so that while we sing something together as a church, that in a very personal way for you, there may be something that you are saying, God, as I praise you and I thank you for who you are, you are thinking very specifically, heart, mind, and soul about something that God did in your life or your family that last week. In fact, one of the, the greatest challenges to, to making God the object of our worship, to thinking about worship is not just an event, not just something that we're a part of, but something that where it, it draws us to him. One of the greatest challenges is distraction. Yes? It's so easy to get distracted. And in fact, I would say this even happens for pastors. I love our team and actually worship, as I worship here, uh, it just ministers to my soul in so many different ways. But I think about times when I'm on vacation and we go to another church or I'm at a conference and I find myself where I'm singing and I'm worshiping God and I'm focused on him and all of a sudden I find myself saying, that was really cool. Look at what, I, we might be able to do that at Summit. That would be really unique. Or you find something there to say, oh, that just didn't really work at all, right? Am I the only one who ever asked this problem, right? There's just these distractions where all of a sudden, and I think this is true. I mean, not just for pastors and worship leaders, although as we live in this space, it's so easy to, instead of experience, experiencing worship, it becomes easy to evaluate worship, yes? And what I would say is this, if you run a restaurant, for instance, let's say you work for a restaurant, you run, you play a key role for that kind of operation, you go to another restaurant with some friends or with your family, you can't help yourself but notice how the place is being run, right? You have your own business, and all of a sudden you're out of state or you're in a place where you drop into a similar kind of business, you will automatically notice things. And, and what I would encourage you in is that there are many ways that often what will break worship for us is when all of a sudden we find ourselves evaluating everything around us rather than experiencing the one who is worthy of all praise. And, and I want that for you, I want that for me, I want that for our whole team, I want that for everyone, that even the first time that somebody comes here when they are new to faith and this has not been a part of their journey, to say they're just, they feel something different. Um, and so we offer our worship to the Lord. The second thing that we do is that we do receive gifts from Jesus in worship. We receive gifts from Jesus that worship is not just something that we do as Nick said so well at the start of this message that in view of God's mercy, in view of everything that he has done for us, that, that worship, we do encounter his gifts, his presence. There are ways that even as we worship that God is working here in this room. There are moments where um, as we hear from God's word, as, as we hear um, 
through songs and through music, but also through the teaching of God's word. Psalm 119 uh, verse 105 says it this way. Go ahead and read it with me. Your word is a lamp to for my feet and a light for my path. That that God's word is not just something that we learn from to say, oh, that's interesting. I learned a, a new fact or something that I didn't know today. God's word, is, there's, a, there's a gift for him as you gather into worship that God wants to speak into your life. And, and one, of our, one of the things that we think about as we even evaluate worship as we talk about that here at Summit is that we hope that that God's word connects to everyday life so that it will help you in a personal way in your life, what that means to live out your faith, what that means to go about your work, what that means for your family during the week. And the good news is this, is that if, we, if our ears are open and we are willing to listen, that God wants to show you the way, that God is speaking and active to show you a, a light for your path. I have, I've had many times uh, where people will, even on the same weekend, will come up and, and will share. Um, I, I'm so grateful for the service this morning or for the message that was preached. It felt like God was talking to me. Here's the cool thing, and I can just share this after years of ministry. You can preach the same scripture verse or the same Bible passage, and you can have five or 10 people say, I felt like God was talking to me and hear completely different things. And that is because the Word of God is living and active and powerful, and the Holy Spirit has this incredible way that, that, that from the preaching of one word, it will be applied to this person, and it will come to life for them, and this person will hear it over here. And someone that is sitting in the same section as you, that's a little ways away here in this room, their life might be completely transformed and changed by something that they heard that God has to say for their life. And, and yet simultaneously, it's a part of the experience of, of worship. Uh, some of the other ways that we encounter God, ways that he gives us his gifts is in things like communion as we celebrated earlier. Mark 14 verse 22 says this, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. And then we go on there to say, this is my, this is my blood which is shed for you as, as well. Uh, every time we, we get to share in the Lord's Supper here. As we share in those gifts, it is not just something we are doing, but we believe so deeply here that God does touch the lives of people, that there are moments there where people just experience God's forgiveness again in his strength and his power. Because worship is not just something that we do for God, but worship is something primarily that God does for us. Amen? Next, I want to share with you this, that that the next movement in worship is how we connect with God and with others. So worship is simultaneously, at one point, it is vertical that we are connecting, you and God. There is an inter interaction, a personal connection as God, as God works into our lives and also as we respond to him. But the reality is this, that worship is also horizontal, that that there is a personal connection that we share with other people at the same time. There are things that we share in together. There are ways that even as we gather across the miles, as we gather here on, on, on campus in this room or in the, the lounge or as our kids and students have worship environment from God and honoring him the same way, um, we get to connect with God and with others. Let me share a couple of verses with you that, that speak to, to some of this. There are ways there that as we, as we worship, we get to, to participate. Sometimes it's quiet and very personal. Sometimes there are ways where we get to, to respond. And one of those that Psalm 47 uh, reminds us of is to clap your hands, all peoples, and shout to God with loud songs of joy. And, and it's why, uh, again, in Scripture, you'll see those nods to the ways that God has created us, not just as passive intellectual individuals, but physical 
uh, beings and spiritual beings. And just like kids, teachers will know this, right? That oftentimes kids will be more engaged when learning happens in multiple ways, yes? That for some, you can just be very focused and they could just have, just focused on content all the time, but often becoming experiential and interconnected can be very helpful. I'm not surprised that the maker of the universe that wired us as people understands that even in worship, that, that even the, the posture of our, our, our body and the ways that we respond to him can be helpful in that journey. Uh, you'll see this next passage here uh, as we offer our prayers up to him. This is a way that you get to connect with God as incense offered to him. That's a nod to the Old Testament there, right? That, that incense was burned in the temple as, a, as an offering that would waft up to, to God. And they were encouraged even then to be able to say, your prayers are, are a way that, that you can offer your worship to God. And the upraised hands, my upraised hands, as an evening offering. Uh, which is why I do believe that God can worship. What is most important is the, the heart. Uh, and different people are wired. Some people are more passive and subdued. Some people are more exuberant. But as people raise hands, as people worship God in this place, there are some incredible ways that together as a church that, that it can even draw us into this posture of worship. Um, if you go back to early Christians and you go back to the, the history of the church and some of the earliest days, did you know that you can go into the catacombs in Rome when some of the early Christians in those first couple hundred years went underground because of persecution? There is artwork and there are things and there are moments there that, that show Christians with hands raised to God. Right? It's not a new concept and was very much a part of the Jewish culture as well. Uh, next, I would encourage you with this, uh, Psalm 122, it's a psalm of ascent. It's something that was meant to be sung even as people were going to the temple, even before they got there. It says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, it is um, an incredible thing that that you get to welcome others, that we get to share in this experience. And, and digitally here right now, we can connect and even stay connected. I've had so many people that like live here and across the miles for different times of the year, or people that travel for work, so grateful for the opportunity to stay connected with our church digitally in some of those kinds of ways. Uh, but, but there are incredible ways that God does work as we connect not only with God, but as we share this, this community experience of praising him, lifting our voices together, being changed, impacted together, um, God works and absolutely does change lives. I remember somebody uh, that I knew that was a, a friend of mine. He is now relocated out of state for work. Uh, but one of the things that he said for me was even using the app, the, some of the ways that he tried to stay connected with other people in his family, as he would worship here, you can take notes. That's another way that you can connect and engage during worship. He would, he would take notes, and then there's the option to, to email yourself a copy of that uh, on the app afterwards if you want to. But you can put in whatever email addresses you want. This guy would put in about 10 different email addresses and would send it to family members and friends. Why? Because he saw himself not only as a spiritual leader for his family, but he knew he had a lot of nieces and nephews and some brothers and sisters. He had an extended family network where he felt this responsibility and opportunity. How do I help to, to help lead my family in their faith? And even beyond this place here in worship, he would often then, he said, I would send or include this for some other people to say in worship, man, I thought what was shared today would just so speak to your life and would create those connections that draw people together to be a part of worship. So worship, compelling worship that that leads to a response, moves us to action, is something that we encounter, not something that we just passively watch. Uh, worship leads us to offer to God and to, to worship him. There are things that you will receive from God as we worship together. There are ways there that, that we connect with God and with other people. And the fourth I wanna share with you is this, that we are changed by God and we are sent. Uh, 
that we are changed by God and we are sent. And this next week, for instance, we have the, the opportunity here. Um, we're going to be focusing uh, this next weekend uh, on a, uh, the opportunity to, to say, and I think this is important for all of us to understand how the church invests in the next generation. And as we talk about our value for children and students, we've decided to host a family fun weekend. It's going to be a blast. There's going to be bounce houses. There'll be interactive games and activities, things that happen, some food here on campus. Why do we do that? Well, we want people to have fun and have a great time when we all get together here on the weekend. But the reason why we host weekends like that is this. We want to make it it is easy as possible for you and to give you a great excuse and opportunity to be able to reach out to some other families or friends or people that you know and to be able to say, hey, this weekend we're doing this thing here at, at church. We're having a family fun weekend. There are some ways, some fun things that you can be, your kids can be a part of. It helps to tee you up to, to help provide that opportunity and that place for you to be able to invite because worship not only draws us, engages us, impacts our lives, but ultimately God says we are sent, we are changed, and we are impacted by what God is doing so that the entire world may know. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 uh, Jesus preached his most famous sermon of all time. It's the Sermon on the Mount. You can read it there for a few chapters there in, in Matthew. Uh, incredibly provocative, incredibly challenging. Um, yeah, even for us today, if you're a lifelong committed Christian or you are a new Christian, it will challenge you to say, man, Jesus really calls us into a very different life of faith and following him. But what Jesus said there at the end in Matthew chapter 7, he said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, say it with me, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And my prayer for you here is, is this, that, that as we encounter God in worship, as we hear from God's word, as you read God's word on your own during the week, but as you hear from God, as, as you are engaged in this journey of faith, I pray that God will help you to build an incredibly wise and strong foundation for your life. That God will help you build a foundation that will be a blessing for your kids and for your grandkids. Something that will, will be a blessing that will guide your future and bless your life here right now. Jesus says, you wanna experience that? It comes not just from hearing his words, but putting them into practice. And, and Jesus knew many people, they will hear and say, that's fascinating, and then we'll just go back exactly to where they were before. Jesus said, you will be blessed when what you hear gets translated into action in your life. Which is why we often have moments uh, as a part of our messages and teaching where we will have a, a call to action or a challenge to be able to say, why don't you take this step this week? This could be a good opportunity in light of what God has said. Nick started today with Romans chapter 12. Great passage there about our lives being offered as a spiritual act of worship in view of God's mercy. I want to share with you from the message uh, paraphrase, the message version here this morning, what it says. Romans 12 verse 1. So here's what I want you to do. Paul speaking to his Christian friends, people that he's trying to disciple and help them to grow in their faith. He said, here's what I want you to do. God helping you by the power of God in you. Take your everyday ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering. In fact, I just invite you, even in a posture of worship right now, would you just open your hands up in front of you if you're willing to do that as an offering, just to simply to say, God, God, everything in, in my life, how I spend my time, what I do during the week as I go to work, God, I want to I wanna make that an offering to you here today. And in this series we're doing right now is called We Are the Church because there is something profoundly important that God does in your life. It's a part of his mission. It's a part of his call for the world. 
what God does through the church as you all serve and make an impact in different kinds of ways. It is incredible to see what God does. And, and as I think about compelling worship, I think not just about what happens here as we sing and as we, as we worship in that way, as we hear from God's word, but I think about what happens with kids and with students that every weekend people are investing in the lives of the next generation to help their faith come to life, help them worship God. I think about people that set the stage on this campus in so many different ways so that people are drawn in to encounter God from the moment that they they step onto this campus. In fact, I just want to celebrate some of our volunteers and ways that people serve. People like our, our parking team, especially as we get to like the middle of summer, it's 110. Let's just give those people a hand for being, they not only help on, on big weekends navigating traffic, but they also are one of the first smiling faces that people will see. You'll see people there at the front entrance, opening doors and welcoming people here into this place. You'll see those that serve with our info center and team that help to answer questions, that connect with people and help them not only take steps of faith or, or get their questions answered, but also look for ways there that they can get to know them and and I hear so often from people in pizza with the pastor, sometimes even just for somebody that's, that's brand new their first day, that will tell me, you know, I've not been a part of church for a long time. This is all really new to me. I didn't grow up going to church, but I'm telling you, I felt so welcome here. I felt so comfortable. I was so nervous coming here. I didn't know what to expect. I was a little bit anxious, but man, you just, you, I felt so at home. You know why that is? It's because of you. Um, we see people there that gather together in our cafe and in settings there where you share a cup of coffee and you serve and, and create this environment for people to connect. Ray and Bernadette, they would hate me for even giving them a shout out, but they're just phenomenal people and their teams are amazing. And, um, and then as we gather uh, and check in kids into worship as families come in, that, that moment there where a, a, a mom or a dad is is at that point there where that team helps them to say, your kids are in great hands and they're gonna have a good time today. Help them get checked in. As we worship here, we do have the opportunity to sing and to praise here in this room. As we worship together, we have teams that not only help to serve publicly here up for here, but privately in the back in so many great ways. Our tech teams help to make all of this happen behind the scenes. We have those who lead in Summit Kids and who pour into those students and make such an impact in their lives. We have people there that as student worship takes place every weekend, that they are engaged in conversations and connections to help those middle schoolers and high schoolers live out their faith. And I want to say thank you to all of you, because I believe all of that is a part of the compelling worship experience of our church. All of those ways there that as we serve together, we see God move and work and change lives in beautiful ways, which is why as we not only personally connect with God, but help to invest in the lives of others. My, my challenge for you, my call to action this weekend is to sign up to serve on the weekend in some way. There's so many ways that you can serve, be a part of this. You don't, it can be flexible, we'll work with you, our teams will with your schedule. But I wanna show you a way that you can do that here this morning. In fact, everybody take out your phones it's okay, you can play with your phones in church. Go ahead and take them out. <laughs> and I want you to take out your phone, flip open to your camera, and just point to the QR code that's right in front of you on that seat. The QR code there will, if you, if you zap that QR code, it will. And if you do that in the lounge the same way, you can go to the app if you're online. That QR code there will give you three different things right now. It'll give you the, the opportunity to be able to download the app, give you the, the chance to be able to fill out a connection card, and. I encourage you, did you know that you can like request prayer for you or your family every week? Ways that you can connect, make that an interactive part of your worship experience. And the third one there today I want you to click on is to, to sign up for a serving team to respond in that way. And, and I would encourage you, I would ask you, I would challenge you today to, to fill out that form and submit that. To just raise your hand and say, let me find a place where I can be a part of what God is doing to help bring worship to impact the lives of other people. 
and we've all got different gifts and talents. Um, I love the list there. The, the bottom one there simply says, I don't know. You could just choose that and somebody will just talk with you and say, hey, let's talk about some options. But 1 Peter 4 verse 10 says this, that each of you has been blessed with one of God's many wonderful gifts to be used, say it with me, in the service of others. It's a part of our spiritual act of worship. So use your gift well. Let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, I thank you.